3D printing technology has come a long way fast, and after two new product launches, 3D printing has stepped firmly into the consumer market, in the process diverging from some of its early roots. In late September, MakerBot released its latest printer, the Replicator 2, geared less towards the 3D printing enthusiast and more towards the mainstream consumer and designer. They've even opened a retail store in Manhattan. Like, you need three spatulas to speak your homework, huh? In that same week, Formlabs debuted their Form 1 3D printer, which boasts a minimum print resolution of 25 microns. The sleek machine was on display at this year's Maker Fair. My name is David Craner. Um, I'm a co-founder of Formlabs. Um, we also started it with uh, Maxim Lubovsky and Natan Linder. Um, we were students at the Media Lab at MIT, and we did a lot of work with personal fabrication tools there, and we're all designers and engineers ourselves, um, but we were very frustrated that really, really, truly professional high-end design tools like 3D printing, you know, were too expensive, tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars, for the independent professional designer. So we decided to start a company to make the Form 1, which is the first high-quality, yet affordable, and well-designed um, 3D printer that you can buy. On the other side of Maker Faire at the 3D Printer Village was a collection of some 30 homebrew 3D printers products of the RepRap project. RepRap is a loose-knit hacker community that pioneered much of 3D printing's recent revolution. The project's goal is to develop a 3D printer that can print itself. So this is actually one of the original MakerBot printers, and it was called a Cupcake CNC. John Abella has been hosting the 3D Printer Village for three years now. His Frankenstein printer, originally a MakerBot, is typical of the RepRap community. RepRap is open source, which means any designs produced under the project are free to use. That makes finding replacement parts and upgrading parts especially easy. One of the things that, you know, that, that stands out sort of in the, the people that are keeping cupcakes going is that a lot of people, we were just speaking to somebody, um, a lot of people are running sort of aftermarket electronics. So um, sort of, you know, hop up parts and, and improvements over the stock electronics uh, that exist because it's open source. So people were able to take the original designs, improve on them, get electronics made, and then sell them, you know, really cheaply, $20, $30, um, so that you can, you know, keep these old machines going even after they're not supported and original parts aren't available anymore. And then there's Jordan Miller, who is taking advantage of RepRap's open source designs to build 3D printers that can be used to create functional vascular structures. Miller's method works by having the 3D printer print vasculature models in a sugar-like material, which can then be used as a mold for living cells and eventually dissolved. In proof-of-concept experiments, blood pumped through the vasculature was able to deliver nutrients and oxygen. We, instead of starting with a commercial system like a $100,000 machine and trying to make it print sugar, we're trying to start with these open source printers, this amazing community that we have here at Make and uh, Maker Faire, and we're trying to have this community help us develop this, these technologies from the ground up. And uh, the, the open source community and science, they're very compatible. So everything in science is open anyway. So uh, it's really a good, it's been a good merge of uh, communities. So I've printed three other printers with this printer. Yeah, self-replicating. So the Museum of Science has one now. I printed one for my brother and I printed the second one for me. I've got a bunch of people who are waiting for me to print more for them as well. With the release of the closed source Replicator 2, MakerBot, largely a product of the RepRap project, is to some degree turning its back on RepRap and open source. After all, it's hard to make a profit off of something if the designs are open source. While some may see it as a betrayal, Jeff Keegan says he understands why MakerBot did what they did. I, I have various opinions on this. I, I don't... I'm interested in having uh, the essence of open source not be hurt, so I don't want to see somebody testing whether they can close something that's open. He insists, however, that it won't hamper the RepRap project goal of developing a self-replicating 3D printer. Open source is here already. Other people doing things on the side may cause problems for themselves, but it doesn't really affect me, which is why, as an outside observer, I kind of can. But, there, I got bigger fish to fight. Get in my thing to work better. Designing new things for this. I'm happy about that. Tragically, this is the particular instance of RepRap whose great, 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 great grandkid 
will build the first thing that lets Skynet unfortunately take actual physical control of the world and enslave us all. So I'm sorry. So all we really have to do is destroy this one instance, but it's too pretty. So we won't.